Let me go ahead and get started. Welcome and thank you for joining this evening's webinar. I'm Andrew Harden. I'm the Scout Executive for Three Harbors Council. And uh, we have several other panelists that are going to be participating in uh, our discussion this evening. Uh, Lucia Cronin, our Council Commissioner, as well as Tweed Barron, our Council uh, Board Chair of Membership, and Nick Thornton, our uh, new, as of last week, our new Director of Field Service. Welcome, Nick, uh, to Wisconsin. Thank you. And um, Mary Kavitan is also participating. Mary is our Field Development Director, and she is uh, expertly leading our Zoom webinar and will also be assisting uh, with the question and answer period as part of uh, the webinar. Uh, so our goal tonight is to provide an update on some of the recently announced changes in the relationship between the Boy Scouts and the Archdiocese of Milwaukee uh, that will take effect at the end of this year, at the end of 2023. Across our council, we have approximately 50 PACs and troops and, and crews that are currently chartered to Catholic parishes and schools, and they serve more than 800 Scouts. So that we, we know there will be a lot of interest in these changes, and we want to take the time this evening uh, to explain and let you know what we know at this point and answer any questions you may have. Uh, at the very end of our presentation, we'll have time to answer questions. However, uh, you're welcome to go ahead and type your questions into the webinar Q&A feature uh, as they come up during the course of the presentations. So to get us started in the right way, I'd like to call on Mary Kavitan to offer a prayer prior to the start of our meeting. Thank you, Andrew. Um, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Heavenly Father, thank you for your faithfulness throughout the generations. Your word says that although people plan their course in their hearts, it is you who establishes our steps. Give us strength and guidance for everything that lies before us. Whatever we do today, your loving eye is on us, and you have promised to guide us. Help us to fix our eyes on you and walk by faith and not by sight. Strengthen and guide us in our discussion today. In Jesus' name, our Lord. Amen. In the, name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Mary. I'll start off with a brief update on the Boy Scouts of America's bankruptcy, as that is one of the reasons for the changes that have been announced by the Archdiocese. Um, Last week marked the, th the three-year anniversary of the date that the BSA filed for Chapter 11, which occurred in February of 2020. As you may recall, uh, when the BSA filed for Chapter 11, it, they listed two primary goals, and those were uh, first to establish a compensation fund to support survivors of abuse in scouting, and secondly, to ensure that the BSA program, as we know it today, continues into the future. So the good news is that BSA does appear to be on a path to emerge from bankruptcy, and it will accomplish both of those stated goals. However, uh, the exact timing of emergence remains to be determined, but we do believe it is uh, coming up in, uh, in the matter of the coming weeks, two months, uh, that, that they will be emerging from bankruptcy. The BSA's plan of, of reorganization was confirmed by the bankruptcy court in September. The plan is now before the Delaware District Court where the BSA is seeking affirmation of the bankruptcy court's confirmation order. If the district court affirms the plan, we anticipate that the BSA will go effective and formally exit bankruptcy. So it's due to the national BSA's bankruptcy that we have had several national chartered organizations that have traditionally uh, chartered Boy Scouts of pro programs. They have been evaluating their current relationship with the BSA and decided to make changes, which brings us to the reason for the webinar. This is the second of our two uh, update webinars. The first one was yesterday evening. And last night we were able to have the chief financial officer and general counsel for the Archdiocese of Milwaukee uh, to join us for an update. Unfortunately, today they have a large church meeting and they are not able to join us this evening. However, our council commissioner, Lucia Cronin, has offered to provide a summary of what 
uh, the leadership shared with us last night. Lucia. Thank you, Andrew, and welcome to all of you who've joined. Thank you so much for joining, and thank you for all that you do for scouting. Um, as Andrew said, last evening we had the Chief Financial Officer and the Chief Legal Counsel of the Archdiocese of Milwaukee on this webinar with us, and they, they stayed for the entire time, which I, I think speaks very well of their interest in seeing as smooth a transition as we possibly can have. What they explained last night, and I'll do my very best to summarize the comments they made last night, what they explained is that um, they took a long and thoughtful look at where they were, what was being required of them by their insurance carrier, and then how could they best continue to support scouting? And so it's really um, ultimately for insurance reasons that they can no longer continue to charter units. It, it would require an onerous amount of administrative work on their part, not just owning the units, but, but really having to run the units, do all the administrative paperwork and so forth. And they just don't have the capacity to do that. But they looked at another alternative which is called a facilities use agreement. And we'll spend some time this evening talking about that. They decided ultimately that they want to support scouting. They want, to, they want scouting to continue in Catholic parishes and Catholic schools across the archdiocese. And they are willing to sign the facilities use agreement so that units can continue meeting in the same places where they have been meeting. If they've been meeting in the church hall or church meeting rooms, that sort of thing in the church school, they are welcome to continue doing that once the facilities use agreement is signed. And, um, you know, they, they wanna be supportive. They will um, continue to have the Archdiocesan Catholic Committee on Scouting continue to function just as it always has. Um, Ray Irby, who is an active scouter in Three Harbors Council, chairs that Archdiocesan Catholic Committee on Scouting. Uh, they will continue uh, as an archdiocese to have the Archdiocesan Celebration of Scouting, which is a scout mass that is held each year. Uh, this year it's scheduled for April 22nd. And um, at the conclusion of that mass, any Cub Scout, Scouts BSA or venturing member who has earned a Catholic religious emblem within the last year, they're called forward by name and the bishop um, gives a blessing and they, they receive recognition for having completed their religious emblem. That will continue. And, and then by the way, at the end of that event, there's a, a fun sort of supper uh, for everybody where we can just visit with one another and congratulate the award recipients. They will also be continuing to uh, support the adult uh, religious emblems program. So um, scouters who uh, support the development of faith of Catholic youth are eligible to earn the Bronze Pelican Award or the St. George emblem or both, uh, depending on their tenure of service and the, the quality of their service, the extent to which they were involved. They will continue to support that. And those emblems are also presented at the conclusion of the Scout Mass each year, which I said will be April 22nd. So um, the, the work of the Archdiocesan Committee will continue, the work of the National Catholic Committee on Scouting will continue, and I've been somewhat involved in that. Um, the retreat, uh, which is known as the Pope Pius XII retreat for Scouts who are ages 15 and 16, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, that will continue uh, with this year's retreat set to be held on March 24th to the 26th, and that's at the Christ Pond Retreat Center in Random Lake. <clears throat> excuse me. And then um, the, um, as I said, we're, we're going to continue to promote um, the earning of religious emblems by all of our Catholic Scouts across all parishes, so that will continue to be promoted. We would hope that um, the scouts 
would actually still be presented with the medals themselves in their home parish and that the home parish would make something of that. And we've received indication from the archdiocese that they would be very supportive of that. And then um, I, I'm going to, I've already talked a bit about this facilities use agreement. And so I'm going to ask Twee Barron, who was our council membership chair and a member of our executive committee to share the details of how that new facilities use agreement will work. Tui? Thanks, Lucia. Uh, yes, I definitely want to go through the facilities use agreement and share the information. I think one of the important components of the Archdiocese of Milwaukee's relationship, new relationship with the BSA, is that they will continue to allow the units to use their facilities to hold scout meetings um, at their local parishes and schools, as Lucia mentioned. And this is going to be accomplished um, through the signing of this facilities use document. Um, and this new agreement will allow for the use of space for meetings. It will allow for storage of camping equipment and trailers if the local parish has available space. Um, this particular agreement is a um, tri-party agreement. It's a legal document um, that uh, cannot be altered, but must be signed because it's a tri-party must be signed by the unit uh, committee chair and authorized representative of that local parish or school, and, as well as um, our scout executive council here. Um, the document will go into effect January 1st, 2024. So we are waiting for final approval, but we are going to be distributing this facilities use agreement in the coming week. And we plan to post that on our council website. Um, for you to complete that by this fall so that you're all ready for the coming um, next calendar year to execute that. Um, the signing of this facilities use agreement means that the scouting experience for your scouts and scout families will be essentially, uh, essentially unchanged, as Lucia mentioned, and as they will continue to meet at the local parish or school. So that is a really great positive um, thing that we have with regards to this agreement. And the Three Harbors Council really will encourage your unit to continue meeting at your local Catholic parish or school if at all possible. There was a question last night um, with regards to, is there going to be any additional costs? And um, our representative from the Archdiocese said that would be determined by the local parish or school. So they may or may not charge you an additional cost, but um, that would be something to discuss when you're going through the agreement. Um, those were the main items that I wanted to share. Um, as you have any questions with regards to the agreements, feel free to post them and we'll also have that in the Q&A as well. I'd like to pass it on to Lucia now, maybe to discuss about what are the options for our units overall for the next coming year. Lucia? Thank you, Twee. Sure, thank you. Um, so, all right, your local parish is no longer going to be your chartering organization. How will you charter? How will you be registered? And there are two paths that, that you can take. So if your unit chooses to secure a new chartered organization, that organization will serve as the new owner of your unit's banking and equipment assets. So they will own those assets. And um, if you if they do that, you can, can as Twee and I have already mentioned, your unit can continue to meet at the Catholic church or school where they are currently meeting. We want this, and, and the archdiocese representatives expressed this also last evening. We want this to be a transition that's seamless and um, not in any way disruptive to the unit. So they can continue to meet where they have been meeting. Your district staff member will work with your unit leadership to help to identify a new chartered organization. Our goal is to have all new chartered, chartered organization commitments secured by August 1st of 2023 so that we can have this transition occur this fall uh, in time uh, for, for the start of the 2024 recharter process. Once you secure a new chartered organization, 
you will need to change your unit bank account and arrange for your unit's equipment and trailer to be covered by the property insurance policy of the new chartered organization. So that's an important point of conversation when you're having that discussion with a potential or prospective new chartered organization. What, what is a chartered organization? In the Boy Scouts of America, it is a community-based group whose objectives and mission and methodologies are compatible with those of the BSA. The organization agrees to use the scouting program to, to further its mission to serve young people. And the partnership is intended to be deeper than, let's say, a sponsorship agreement between a youth baseball team and a local business. A chartered organization for scouting programs is typically one of these. It could be a church, a school, a civic or service club, for example, the Rotary, Kiwanis, Lions. Uh, it could be a veterans organization, the VFW or the American Legion. It could be a community group, a neighborhood association, an outdoor club, <clears throat> excuse me, I went to get a little water and I'm not sure it helps, so I apologize for the scratchy throat. Um, or a chartered organization could be a local business. Now that's less common, but it is still an option. It's important to note that there are a few options that will not work um, for a chartered organization. A scout unit cannot create a nonprofit corporation that is a 501c3 just for the purpose of chartering a unit. Units are not legal entities and they are not authorized to incorporate per the BSA's rules and regulations. Obtaining an IRS 501c3 designation by a unit puts unit leaders and parents at risk to the extent that their actions may violate IRS private benefit rules. In other words, there can be tax consequences for those parents. Um, revenues earned, wreath sale, you know, other fundraising activities um, by a unit. There could be a tax liability um, for, for those parents. So that's really important to steer clear of that. And then similarly, creating a self-chartered unit uh, through a group that might be called the Friends of or the Parents of PAC 123. That arrangement is also not an option due to the IRS rules around private benefits. Um, let's talk just for a minute about changes that are occurring at other national chartered organizations. It's important that we be very thoughtful about how a unit will make a change and what direction they're going to go. So the Archdiocese of Milwaukee has now made this decision. They were kind enough to give us almost 11 months to get the changes made. We're gonna to try to get them made in about six months. But, but please be aware that um, due, to the, due to the impact of the BSA bankruptcy, there are other organizations who are going the same direction. The United Methodist Church also made a change in its relationship with the BSA last summer and local United Methodist churches will no longer serve as chartered organizations. Uh, similarly, there was an, a national announcement by the Moose Lodge that they will no longer serve as a chartered organization. And, and while these are the only national groups who've made the official announcements uh, up until now, I want you to recognize that it's entirely possible that other churches or other religious groups or civic organizations may follow. I would be concerned if a unit went to the effort and trouble of finding a new chartered organization and a year or two from now or at some point in the future, that organization's insurance carrier came to them in the same way that the insurance carrier for the Archdiocese, Archdiocese of Milwaukee um, has, has really forced this change. So be very thoughtful about that. I, I, I don't want units to be 
put in a situation where they have a lot of work to do that that's um, that could be avoided. So uh, the unit leadership really should be aware of these factors as you look at other potential chartered organizations. So in addition to that, as one alternative, what's another alternative? Another option for your unit is to become a council registered unit. Under this arrangement, your unit's banking and equipment assets will be overseen by the council rather than by that local church or school or civic organization. You will not be chartered to a community organization, but rather your unit will be registered directly with Three Harbors Council. And as a council registered unit, your unit will continue to meet at the Catholic church or school where it has been meeting. And your, um, uh, as long as you have that facilities use agreement in place. So you can continue that, but you would be a council registered unit. Okay, so what changes if you become a council registered unit? Um, there, there would be two main changes relating to the, the bank account and the property insurance arrangements. Um, your new, your unit, excuse me, would establish a new bank account as an affiliate account of Three Harbors Council at a financial institution. And then your treasurer would work with the bank representative to change the EIN number to the council's EIN number. Each January, the unit must provide uh, the council with an annual financial report dated December 31st of the previous year. And it's a summary of the unit's opening and closing balances. And that's required by our auditors. That's why that has to be done. <clears throat> we're, not, <clears throat> we're not nosy and um, wanting to know, uh, you know, all the, uh, every detail of your, of your troop or PACS finances, but for auditing purposes, we have to know that opening and that closing balance at the beginning and end of the year. And then we do have to follow the BSA's fiscal policies and procedures um, regarding signatures and so forth. And um, there'll be further information that will be able to be provided to you on that. The second change regards property insurance. So for council registered units, the unit's camping and programming equipment, including trailers, will be insured under the council's insurance policy, which will include a deductible. Your unit will be asked to pay an annual fee to cover this property insurance policy. And for some units, their chartering organization has already been charging them that fee. And in other cases, they haven't been. So that's possibly something that would be new for your unit. Um, the details of the amounts will be determined once a unit inventory is complete. So it would have to be inventoried. And, and of course, we want to keep those fees as reasonable as possible. Um, for units who own trailers, an annual self-inspection will be required for safety purposes. And our insurance will uh, require that the trailers be stored empty and in a secure area and have an anti-theft coupler lock when stored. Um, the timeline for council registered units is, um, um, you know, we, we think it would be a good one and you, you, we will work with Andrew Harden and with the field staff on making the changes if, if that's something um, in which your unit is interested. All right, yep. so go ahead. Lucia, thank you for, for going through all that and, and describing uh, the two, two options. Um, I'll give a, um, a quick summary of, of the transition timeline uh, as we look to, um, uh, to have these changes in place um, by the end of the year. So starting now um, through the spring, our, our district executives um, uh, supported by Nick Thornton uh, will be in touch with uh, each one of our, our unit leaders at Catholic uh, chartered units and discussing these two options. So either moving to another chartered organization or becoming a council registered unit. Uh, 
Uh, if the unit leadership uh, decides that they would like to become a council registered unit, uh, which we believe is a good option based on um, everything that, that Lucia has described, uh, we would like to know that uh, by July 1st, uh, just uh, uh, yes, we're planning to do this so that we can begin the transition process uh, for your for your unit. If your unit would like to move to another chartered organization, uh, we ask that you work uh, along with our staff to get the new organization um, secured uh, by August 1st. Now, when I say secured, we're just looking uh, to have a, a commitment from a new organization, not that you would become chartered to that organization. Uh, that process would, would take place at the end of the year through our normal unit rechartering process. And then in the fall, our staff will work with you, uh, with your unit leadership uh, to get the facilities use agreement, the new agreement that, that Twee described, uh, signed uh, by the parish leadership, signed by the unit leadership, and also by the council, so that that can be in place um, by the end of December. And then finally, all 2024 recharters uh, will be completed uh, by December 31st, and we can be in uh, everything, all of the administrative work prepared so we can move on um, and, and, and the new, new relationship uh, starting January 1st of 2024. So um, as I've been speaking, I've seen that there's been a few questions that have um, come up. And so maybe we'll just take a moment and, and review those questions and see if um, there are any other uh, questions that, that, that we can also answer. Um, the first question is, um, uh, there was a question about, can we provide uh, information on what it's like, uh, what is what is needed to become a new chartered organization? And that's something uh, that Nick and I can work on. And I'm sure we can have those available as soon as next week uh, and, and also available on our council website. All right, there's another question about um, Will this information be shared in writing with the unit so they can share with our unit committee? Um, so we will be, this, this webinar is recorded and we'll be posting the webinar. And uh, we will also, um, you know, share a summary with, with our unit leaders. Uh, but most of what we covered was already communicated in the email uh, that went out about 10 days ago. Mary, do you want to, are there any other questions coming through? There's a few. Okay. Can, I'll just can, add, go, go ahead, Mary. Does can parishes or parish groups still make donations to a PAC? Yes, indeed. Anybody can make a make a donation um, to a PAC or troop. And we hope they will. So this question was brought up. A little yesterday, this this one is worded very well. Um, would we be able to have talking points to address the delicate point that why would any sort of civic organization want to take the risk of chartering a scout unit when the archdiocese has decided that's too risky of an endeavor? Well, we have talking points available. Yes, so we, the National BSA has a, a very nice document on the um, insurance that is available, liability insurance that protects charters organizations. So we can we can share that, um, and that would be an excellent um, talking point. Um, so we'll make sure that we have that uh, in addition to the other documents we're talking about. Along with that, Andrew, there's the uh, new unit sales kits. Uh, there's nice infographics and things like that that'll be provided, plus the uh, charter agreement and the documentation that goes along with that that we take to our sales calls. Um, that kind of highlights the benefits of what scouting brings to those organizations as well, not just the risks. Right, be because there are benefits. There are. And, and I'll, ju I'll just add that um, we will put together an FAQ, Frequently Asked Questions document. There were, um, as we've said, a number of good questions last evening and good questions this evening. And we'll put together a document um, that we can share and, and post. Is there another question that's, that's another been asked? Another question, yes. Um, does this change the relationship pertaining to our scouts volunteering for our parishes? 
No, not at all. That's there's no, no no change with that, and we hope that um, scouts will continue to be active in their local parish. I think it was emphasized last night by Chris Brown, the CFO, that it, that they are still supportive of scouting. In fact, he talked about his two children being in scouts, so that was very um, appreciative as well. So. I just want to emphasize that it doesn't change the relationship. If, if the scout and scout families want to volunteer at parishes doing community service or other projects, um, as well as obviously this use agreement is, a, is an excellent way to continue that relationship by having the experience still there at the school or the parish. Mm -hmm. And I would also encourage many parishes do this, and there are probably some who, who don't, but but um, could and should celebrate Scout Sunday. Um, work with your, um, with the pastor or the um, liturgical minister to get that on the calendar months in advance. So it's on the calendar for that first Sunday in February. Promote it to all the scouts in the parish, regardless of what school they attend, that they should wear their uniforms, as should the leaders sit together at the front of church on Scout Sunday at one of the designated masses, perhaps arrange to have um, scouts be altar servers for that mass, and perhaps some of the older scouts could even serve as lectors during the mass. And it's a wonderful way to celebrate scouting within the parish. There's a question that came up, and this is actually a very similar question came up last night. Um, and I think it's a good good one, so I appreciate it. Um, it says for units that have a boys troop and a linked girls troop and, and, a, and a venturing crew, uh, will that be one insurance fee or would we have to pay multiple fees? Um, since they will be using the same equipment, I would anticipate that we'll work out a, a, a plan here uh, where it would just be one fee uh, for the equipment, equipment that is shared amongst a three three um, sort of linked units. Another question was asked, uh, my PAC works and sponsors one of the three Lent fish fries that gets profits from the fish fry. Does that relationship change? Um, that would still be a, uh, a unit money earning form uh, process and that would be an approved fundraiser through the, through the, through the council. So if you fill out that process, you would be safe to continue on with that uh, fundraising endeavor. Right. And this change in chartering should have no impact on that at all. Okay, so we've had some good questions. Uh, just want to give it a minute here and see if anybody else has any additional questions that we can answer before we uh, wrap up the webinar. Okay. Well, uh, as we started this, uh, we want to say thank you uh, to each one of you for uh, your service to scouting. And um, oh, well, there's a, a, ni a nice note. Thank you. Um, there's a comment to, to say thank you uh, to, to those on the webinar for explaining the process and the transition. We appreciate that. Um, I want to thank our panelists uh, who have been involved in both of these webinars and for providing this information. And for if you have any additional questions um, that were not answered tonight, uh, please reach out to me uh, or to Nick or to Mary, and we'd be happy to to meet with you or, or um, answer your questions with a phone call. Um, we want to make sure that this process is as smooth as possible uh, over the coming months uh, so that we're prepared uh, for 2024. Mm -hmm. So thank you, everybody, and I uh, hope you have a wonderful evening and a great rest of the week. Take care.